Hey, guess what's happening on this week's episode of the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with your friend and host, Oscar Camejo. Are you having a hard time losing weight and keeping it off, even though you may be on a good, quote unquote, good diet program? You're probably like so many people at that point where you simply want to fix a problem because your diet isn't working. That highly restrictive diet program that someone recommended is not working. It has you drastically cutting your favorite carbs. It has you counting calories. It has you meal prepping, even though your life is very hectic and you have a lot going on. At this point, you're probably frustrated at the lack of results. You're probably tired of the yo-yo dieting, going from one extreme to the next. You're seeing some success and experiencing what feels like failure all the time. Well, today, let's work on getting to the possible root cause and fixing it. In this week's episode, I'm going to talk to you about the psychological diet cycle and how to break it, how to break the weight gain and weight loss and then weight regain that so many people deal with. I'm going to also help you by giving you some recommendations of my three favorite books to help you take your journey of health and long life to the next level. So my friends, stick around to hear the rest of today's episode is going to be a great one that you definitely don't want to miss. Let's go. Be sure to visit the website at www.beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com for access to free resources and other information that will help you along your journey. If you would like to submit a question or a comment about the show or to learn more about the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle, you can always email me at hello at beatingdiabeteslifestyle.com. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast. Welcome to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with me, your host, Oscar Camejo, helping diabetics make lifestyle changes to reverse type 2 diabetes. Today, let's dive straight into this episode. This is why your diabetes diet isn't working and how to fix it. I want to share with you a comment that came from one of my faithful TikTok followers. She's been following for years and I'm grateful for her to be tuned in, just like I'm grateful for so many other people who follow. This is from Pooh Girl 2022. I allowed my family situation to put me over the top and now I'm back to being overweight. Well, thank you, Pooh Girl, for sharing your thoughts. Listen, folks, I'm sharing this because she did put it out there publicly, so I'm not telling her business and so forth. But a lot of people deal with this. There's family situations that get in the way of you pursuing your health and nutrition goals. And you're probably at that same point like she is where you're back to being overweight and you put on some extra pounds that you already lost, but you may have regained it and gained some more. That's a common problem. You have life, there's obligations, there's setbacks. I mean, fill in the blank with your own situation. You're back to being overweight and dealing with all of these, this yo-yo dieting possibly and just going up and down. You know, you're starting, but then not finishing. You're starting and not finishing and you're frustrated. You know, before going any further into examining what may be wrong with your specific diet, I want to address the invisible elephant in the room. It's your mindset. That's right. It's an invisible elephant. Your mind, folks, I'm telling you, it's a battlefield. It's a battleground. I want to ask you a question. How are you feeling about yourself right now at this moment? Or how have you been feeling about yourself for a while now and about your problems with weight and weight gain and not really being able to lose as much weight as you've been wanting to? I want you to be honest. I want you to say it out loud right now. I am blank. Go ahead, do it. Are you angry? Say it. I'm angry. I'm mad. I'm sad. I'm frustrated. I'm disappointed. I'm ready to give up. I don't know what to do. Whatever your situation is right now, whatever you're feeling, whatever is your mindset right now, do you feel like giving up? Say it. Now, I know words are very powerful. That's why I also want you to now say, 
despite how I'm feeling about myself and my situation right now, my life will be transformed. And I am going to do whatever it takes to change my mindset so I can change my life. Yeah, there's something about acknowledging how you're feeling, putting those in words, describing exactly what's going on, getting it out of your system and releasing it. And now turning those feelings and those thoughts into positive affirmations. Yeah, I know you're angry at yourself. You may be angry at the person who sold you the idea that this diet program that you're going to start is going to be the end all be all and you've wasted a whole bunch of money. Trust me, I know people who wasted a lot of money on diet programs that are not working. And in some situations, people are responsible for working the programs. Now, listen, I don't want you to feel bad. You've been kicking yourself and beating yourself up for far too long. Let's change the narrative. I had to do that in my own life. You know, when I was overweight and when I was first diagnosed with type 2 diabetes uh, in the hospital, I was feeling down. I was feeling depressed. I was scared. And I was wondering, how did I get here? (laughs) How did I let this happen to myself? How did I get to the point where now I'm almost, uh, I was on the brink of dying? Dealing with heart issues, dealing with eyesight issues, all kinds of issues, high blood pressure, high cholesterol. You know, after a few days in the hospital, I remember, you know, getting out of bed. Finally, that bed was stiff. (laughs) It, It was annoying. I was just ready to get up out of the hospital, ready, definitely to get up out of that bed. And I sat down by a window and I had I was thinking about my entire life. You know, at this time I was about 47 years old. And so I, I remember sitting there and I had my cell phone and I, I was just thinking about my life and, you know, my family and so forth. And, you know, I kind of felt like I was, I had let some people down as real talk, you know? And for some reason I took out my phone and I took a couple of pictures of what I looked like. And I think at that time, maybe I took the pictures so I can send to my family so they can see that I was okay. Um, But I remember taking a side profile picture of myself just thinking and looking out the window. And I have that picture to this day. You know, that was the day that I decided to turn things around for good. It started with my mindset and changing and shifting my mindset, folks. And changing how I felt about myself. Yeah, that week in the hospital did something to me. I mean, it just awakened this desire to just, man, turn things around like for real, for real. I knew that I needed to fix my thoughts and to get my emotions in check. You know, when you're going through something like that, man, I mean, all kind of things go through your mind. I don't want you to be in a situation where you end up in the hospital and that's when you decide to change. Maybe some of you have already been to the hospital and you stumbled onto this podcast because you're searching for solutions and answers to beating diabetes and managing diabetes. And you just don't know what to do. And, you know, I'm grateful that you were able to find this podcast. I don't believe it was a coincidence. But folks, just like how I had to change my thoughts about myself and my situation, I had to stop thinking of myself as this big fat walrus that let himself go. I had to really change my mindset. It did not happen overnight, folks. And it's going to be the same for you. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know if you've been newly diagnosed with prediabetes or full-fledged type 2 diabetes. I don't know if you have cholesterol problems, if you have thyroid issues, if you have uh, high blood pressure. I, I don't know. You know your situation. Maybe you're concerned because it runs in your family. But listen. You're going to have to change your mindset. Your loved ones are also going to have to change their mindsets too. Because listen, no diet program can fix your thoughts. Only you can fix your thoughts. No exercise program in the world can fix your thoughts. There is no diet pill on this planet that's going to cause you to fix your thoughts. You see, folks, change your thinking in order to change your life. 
Let me say that again. Change your thinking in order to change your life. Now, let's deal with the solution, folks. There's this thing called the psychological diet cycle. And a lot of people get caught up in the cycle and they don't really realize it. So let me explain. When it comes to dieting, it can create a mindset of succeeding or failing. You know, you get on a program and you feel like you're having some success, but then something happens, you have a cheat meal, whatever, then you feel like, man, I'm failing. I just totally bombed. So this diet, this psychological diet cycle can lead to harmful roller coaster or yo-yo dieting. This is why your diet program may not be working because you may be caught up in the psychological diet cycle. Let me explain further what I mean. Here's a cycle. You start a diet, you know, you have the courage and you're like, man, I'm, I'm going to start this diet. I'm going to go grocery shopping. I'm going to get all this stuff together and I'm just going to quit cold turkey. But whatever it is, I'm going to start this diet. It could be keto. It could be paleo. It could be Mediterranean. It could be vegan and vegetarian, pescatarian. I almost said Presbyterian, but <laughs> no, we're talking about food and dieting, right? So you start the diet program and you start seeing some weight loss. You know, maybe it's been a couple of weeks, maybe been a month or so, and you're shedding one to five pounds. So there's some moving of the needle, if you will. The scale is showing a little bit of progress. But then you start feeling like, man, it's been a few weeks, it's been a month, and it just feels like, man, I'm so restricted. I got to eat this or I can't eat that. And I got to just stay within this box. And guess what happens? That restriction, that high restriction diet starts leading to cravings and you start craving those foods that you swore that you'll never have again. And then guess what you start doing? You start thinking about those foods more and more and your mind is really thinking so much about those foods. And then eventually, guess what? When nobody's looking, when you're by yourself, you give in to the cravings. And let's say you go and have that burger or you go and have those sweets. Oh, nobody knows. It's just you. But then guess what? You give in to that craving once and you give in to it again. And then before you know it, you just start overeating. And then your weight loss starts slowing down. Or maybe in some situation, it just stops. You plateau. And guess what happens? You're in this cycle because now at this point, you start feeling guilty. In that place of being guilty and full of so much guilt for giving to those cravings, you start eating more. Then guess what happens? Because you started overeating and eating more, you start gaining more weight. And in some cases, you start gaining more weight than before. And guess what happens after that? You start feeling frustrated. And for some people, it may be three months later, of just like, man, you know what? I'm frustrated. I'm just, I'm just upset. And they just like, man, this diet isn't working or this whole thing is just too hard. It's too restrictive. But then they're like, you know what? I got to get back on it. So they repeat the cycle again. They, they start the diet. They start losing some weight, feeling good about the weight loss. Then it starts feeling restricting (laughs) again. But this time you say, you know, I want to try something new because that keto stuff didn't work for me. I'm going to go try vegan. So you go vegan this time. And guess what? You start feeling the restrictions. The craving starts kicking in again and so on and so forth. You see what I'm saying? It's this repeat cycle over and over again. And frankly, your dieting is not working. That thing that somebody promised you, that if you just stuck to it, it's going to give you results. Now, listen, yeah, there's a responsibility that we have to bear when it comes to changing our lives and changing our habits. But listen, I don't want you to feel like, you know, even worse now, like, oh, man, I hear what you're saying, Oscar, man, I suck. You know, I, I'm just really this terrible person who has no discipline. I want, Remember, stop thinking with these negative thoughts. 
You've been beating yourself up for far too long. My goal is to help you to stop the psychological dieting cycle. You see, there's a reason why you have intense cravings while you're on your diet program. There's a reason why you may be turning to food and giving in to having more than one cheat meal a week. You see, when you quickly deprive yourself of bad foods you enjoy, remember the key word is when you quickly deprive yourself, when you quickly just restrict yourself because you started this program and it says for the next 10 days, don't do this, boom, 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 boom. When you do that quickly, when you start getting rid of the quote unquote bad foods quickly and you go cold turkey quickly, you are going to have cravings for those same foods eventually. And then you're going to give into those cravings eventually. You see, you're going to feel like you failed after every cheat meal. Been there, done that. Listen, folks, I know when I first started this uh, weight loss journey and I started this podcast and I was telling people, hey, I want you to cut uh, rice, bread, sugars, you know, sweets, pasta and so forth for the next 10 days. Yeah, there's a place for that. There's some people that, yes, can go cold turkey. There's some things that I did cold turkey, other things that it took me a while. I'm not saying that you shouldn't quickly, you know, restrict certain things. But when you go wholesale and you're not ready, but you're just like, you know what? This piece of paper said to don't eat these things for X amount of period. And you haven't mentally prepared for that. You are going to go back into those bad habits and give into those cravings and so forth. And then you are going to feel like you failed. And you are going to feel like you have no success in those programs. It's a cycle, folks. We've all been there. You're not alone. But I'm here to help you. You see, I'm not a fan of those quick weight loss programs anyway. I've never gone on any weight loss program. I'm not trying to disparage any of them. I'm not telling you not to. But I wanted to build a lifestyle for myself that I knew could be sustainable. You see, a lot of these quick weight loss programs, they create all kinds of restrictions that leave you feeling trapped. And eventually, like I said before, the cravings start kicking in and you eventually give in to those cravings. We want to stop the cycle. We want to stop the psychological dieting. I believe that cravings and overeating has to be dealt slowly and steadily, not overnight. Now, specifically for my diabetic listeners, you know, you've been diagnosed with prediabetes or type 2 diabetes. If you're overweight right now and you've been dealing with weight problems for a very long time, I know you want to shed those pounds real quickly. I know when I was in the hospital, I was literally sitting in that chair by the window I was telling you about. And I I remember looking at my stomach and touching my stomach. And I was like, dang, man, you got to get rid of this stuff. If you were like me, I know you don't like the way your clothes fit right now. I know you hate dealing with back pain, with knee pain. When you sit down, when you stand up, when you walk up and down stairs. I've been there, done that. Maybe that's why you don't like exercising because it's, it's painful. You're dealing with inflammation in your body and everything just seems to hurt. And there could be other medical complications that you're dealing with and you're just tired, man. And then the doctor tells you you have to take all this medication and you're like, man, I don't want to be injecting myself. I don't want to have to take pills. You know, what can I do not to have to deal with that? Now, I'm not telling you folks not to take medication. You have to do what's right for you. You have to do what you feel comfortable doing. So for me, yeah, I was on medication for a while until I didn't need medication. It almost seems like my body started rejecting the medication because my body got to the point where it healed itself. And I no longer needed type 2 diabetes uh, medication. I didn't need metformin anymore. I didn't need Novolog anymore. I didn't need the insulin injections anymore. I didn't need any of that. Then eventually I didn't even need the high blood pressure medications and the high cholesterol medications. It was a slow and steady change. It didn't happen overnight. 
So again, remember, slow and steady is the key to seeing lasting change. Folks, it's been over three years now since I had that situation of almost dying. And it's been, wow, uh, well over two years of me completely being off type 2 diabetes medication and all medications. I'm telling you folks, it's been a journey and I'm in tip top shape, but it didn't happen overnight. I didn't lose the weight overnight, folks. Yeah, I was able to lose over 80 pounds. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think the most I've lost so far is 84 pounds. I'm 184 pounds now. I used to be 208, 268 pounds. You see, studies show that slow, steady weight loss over a longer period of time is the most effective way to lose body fat and keep it off. That's the key, keeping it off. Because guess what, folks? You can go and do a surgery if you want and just kind of shave off all the fat and and whatnot. And that's a quick, immediate way to get the weight off. But you have to think, okay, does that really change my habits? Is is a surgery really going to help me to change my mindset and how I feel about myself? Folks, I've heard of people who have lost tremendous amount of weight, but they look in the mirror and they still hate what they see. They st- they're already thin and lean, but they still think that they're overweight. There's people dealing with um, disorders, you know, eating disorders, and they're dealing with maybe some trauma and they've used food to comfort themselves. So there's a whole other side of the mental and mindset chains that have to be dealt with in a lot of situations. If that's you and you've been dealing with some psychological issues when it comes to just how you feel about yourself, the depression and so forth, and maybe there's been some trauma in your life and you had to turn to food or you've chosen to turn to food to comfort yourself, Man, my heart goes out to you all. Maybe you know someone who's dealing with that and they're just kind of dealing with some eating disorders. I do recommend that you get some professional help to help you to navigate through that because that's a real thing. And some people have, you know, not been able to recover from it. And I want you all to be able to recover from those challenges and, you know, live a healthier life. Okay, so now let's move on. When it comes to certain foods that you may be deciding, should you cut cold turkey or not? I want you to think about this. Instead of cutting out those foods, cold turkey, or adopting an entirely new diet program immediately, first focus on controlling how much you're eating in the first place, how much food is on your plate. It's all about portion control. Portion control is very important. Instead of having two burgers, for example, in one sitting, eat one. Instead of five slices of pizza, cut it down to three. If you're used to getting two slices of pizza, you get the drift, cut it down to one. What about donuts? Instead of 12 donuts, go for six. Instead of drinking an entire liter of soda in a day, cut back to half. If you're drinking a lot of coffee, let's say seven or eight, cups of coffee with a bunch of sugar in it, try to cut down to four cups and still reduce your amount of sugar that you're putting in each cup. You get my drift. It's about weaning yourself off of those foods and drinks slowly that are contributing to your weight gain. And it could be in some situations you're not sure whether or not something is doing more good than not. Well, that's where education comes Uh, in and uh, getting yourself to the point where you know exactly how these foods are affecting your body, affecting your blood sugar levels and so forth, especially if you're a diabetic. The more you eat, the more likely it will be that you gain weight. It's simple, folks. It's not complicated. Eat more, you have the potential to gain more. That's why portion control is very important. So listen to this. I want this next point to really hit home. Whatever holds your attention the most and the longest is what you will desire the most. Let me say that again. 
Whatever holds your attention the most and the longest is what you will desire the most. So here's an example. Stare at a picture of a juicy hamburger and curly French fries or your favorite fries long enough and you will eventually develop a taste for it just by looking at the picture long enough. That's where media comes in and marketing and sales. They create a desire for you to want that thing in the advertisement. You know, it's a reason why the picture of the burgers look so shiny and nice and huge and you can see all the details of the crispy bacon and cheese and all the stuff that you just absolutely love and can't live without is going to create a desire for those things the more and more you pay attention to it. Think about it. When you're scrolling through social media late at night and you're probably already snacking on some stuff like it used to be for me, you know, or what they call like grazing, you're constantly getting up and getting something to eat while you're watching television or you're scrolling on social media, like I said, whatever the case may be, and you're seeing all these different ads pop up for food. It could be late at night. It could be early in the morning. It could be in the middle of the day, but you're seeing these constant ads for foods and so forth. And guess what happens? You have this desire and taste for those things. So again, whatever holds your attention the most and the longest is what you will desire the most. If it captures and holds your attention, folks, they got you. I want you now to begin redirecting your focus towards healthier things in order to feed your mind. It could be nutrition, physical exercise, what have you. The goal is to now begin to feed your mind because again, the thing that's holding your attention the most and the longest is what you're going to desire. So just use that as a principle. If I give this thing my attention, I'm going to desire it. So let's focus on nutrition for a second. I want you to begin spending more time in the produce aisle. For example, when you go to the grocery store, you're probably used to going up and down the chips aisle, the soda drinks aisle, or the ice cream aisle, what have you. I want you to now take your time, slow down, go to the produce aisle where all the fresh whole vegetables are, not the aisle that has a frozen bags of food and produce. I want you to go to the whole, uh, the, the section where you have the whole produce, right? And just spend some time, just slow down. I know you may be in a rush sometimes, but don't go grocery shopping when you're in a rush. Because nine times out of 10, you're going to pick up a bunch of stuff that you can just quickly make. You have these box foods that, that are frozen and you just heat it up and you have your TV dinners, as they say, which are full of a bunch of sodium. And in some cases, a lot of artificial flavorings that you don't need, you know, sugars that don't belong in dinner foods at all is just packed full of stuff that you don't need just for taste and so forth. I can get on a soapbox and I don't want to do that right now. So I want you to slow down, go to the produce aisle or the produce section of your favorite store. And I want you to look at all the variety of vegetables and fruit that are out there. Just take, take time. Do you know there's different types of oranges? There's the navel oranges. You have your blood um, oranges, but what they call it, the blood red oranges, man, those are really good. There's different types of kiwi. I always thought that kiwi was just green, but man, there's all kinds of kiwi out there. You know, uh, in the produce aisle, there's more than just broccoli folks. And guess what? There's more than just spinach. When I started learning about sleep and really having a good night's sleep and also having um, better control of nervous system and just mood and so forth. I learned a lot about magnesium and I learned about the benefits of magnesium to the body. So I was like, man, the more I'm reading, the more I'm wanting to desire, uh, excuse me, the more I'm wanting to eat those things and try it out. So I found out about Swiss chard that's full of a bunch of magnesium. And I'm like, man, I have never heard of Swiss chard before. And guess what? I sometimes get it and I put it in my foods. I put it in my smoothies sometimes. So again, 
slow down and stop rushing. Spend less time in the snack aisles, the chips aisles. Guys, there's a thousand brands and flavors of chips out there that you can just get lost. And before you know it, your shopping cart is full of a bunch of stuff that you don't need just from the snack aisle and the chips aisle and the soda aisle. Oh my gosh, there's so many brands and flavors of soda. It's just ridiculous. And it's all, that's a sugar aisle. I'm telling you, sugar, 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 artificial sugar left and right. All kinds of things to satisfy, you know, your taste buds, as they say. But I want you to spend less time down those aisles. I want you to spend time looking at things that are healthier for you. Because again, whatever holds your attention the most is and the longest is what you're going to desire. If you're spending 10 minutes on the chips aisle, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to grab you some chips. You know, I'm not an anti-chip person, but I mean, think about it. How many times have you gone to the store and you're on the chips aisle or the cookies aisle and there's all these different options and it's hard for you to choose. So you get more than one kind. You get some for this person who likes this in your household or this person. Or let's say if you're single and you live by yourself. You still have these different options. And you stay there long enough and you're like, oh, you know what? There's the Oreos. Oh, you know, there's the, the chocolate chips over here. The, these are mushy, so I can have those with milk, you know, on Friday. And before you know it, you have like three different types of cookie packages in your uh, cart. And you say, you know, I'm just going to have these for my cheat day <laughs> at the end of the week. Yeah, right. You tell me, you, you, you want me to believe. That those cookies are just going to sit in your cabinet or on top of the counter day in and day out until the end of the week. Come on now. Don't set yourself up for failure, folks. You know, you're working on something and I want to help you out. So again, we want to redirect our focus towards healthier things. So again, remember, whatever holds your attention the most and the longest is what? Yes, that's right. Is the thing that you will desire the most. Same thing with physical exercise. Rather than wait on the desire to work out, you have to create it, folks. You know, it's just not going to happen overnight. You know, for me, I had to get to the point where it was, it, it was a habit to pack my gym bag the night before, not a few minutes before I'm deciding whether or not to go to the gym. No, my bags are packed, ready to go. But it took some time. So again, I want it for myself to start focusing more on physical exercise. So I had to surround myself with things that are going to remind me about, you know, exercise, whether it's downloading an app and getting a a notification to say, hey, it's time to exercise. And some of you guys who don't like apps, you can put it on your calendar, you know, every day on there, 30 minute workout. It could be Five minutes in the morning of doing some stretching and then in the afternoon you spend about 30 minutes, whatever the exercise is that you love doing. You know, you got to set yourself up for success. It's all about feeding your mind, folks, as I mentioned before. I like to buy a lot of books on nutrition and fitness. I have a ton of them. Matter of fact, I have books all around me right now. I like books. I like to feed my my mind. Why do I keep them around me? Why do I keep buying all these different books? I mean, even audio books. It's because I want to keep that desire alive in me to uh, be focused on health and nutrition. Because the thing that I desire now is health. The thing that I desire now is to continue living a life of health and wellness with an emphasis on nutrition, the stuff that I put in my body. I read a lot of articles, blog posts. I watch a lot of YouTube fitness channels and I follow social media influencers who focus on health and nutrition because I'm constantly feeding that desire for healthy things, whether it's for mental stimulation or for physical 
um, maintenance. I just love those things. Matter of fact, I recently bought two books. Uh, one was on stretching and another is on exercising without the need for weights. Because there's sometimes people ask me, hey, Oscar, there's some stretches I see you do. Can you walk me through, you know, increasing my stretching and flexibility? So guess what I do? I keep educating myself on stretching. There's people that come up to me and they're like, hey, Oscar, I don't like working out in the gym where everybody else is and lifting the heavy weights. I see that you do some body weight exercises. Can you help me out? Oh, sure. I could do that. Because you never know. One day you could be just studying something and reading something and, or listening to a podcast like this one and something just clicks in you and you're like, you know what? I'm ready for change. And you just go into this, you know what? I'm never going back mode. You know, the other day on social media, I posted this before and after picture of myself. Um, on one side, I had a picture of how I looked, man, when I was pretty much at my biggest. I was looking at my eyes and I was like, man, there's these dark circles around my eyes. And man, no wonder I was going through all this stuff. Matter of fact, on my desk right now, as I'm recording this podcast, I have a picture of me. Man, I'm in this button down shirt. And my cheeks are just chubby and I didn't have a beard at the time like I do now. And I look at that and I'm like, it's me. I remember when I took that picture, but I don't look like me that I mean, I don't look like that now. I showed some people the before and after picture the other day. It was another picture. And people were like commenting like, man, dude, your transformation is just just wild. And you look like a totally different person. You're unrecognizable in that picture. And I'm like, I know, man, it's because I had to change my mindset, folks, like I started telling you earlier. I had to change the thing that was taking my attention. Folks, when I was 268 pounds, it was nothing for me to spend hours and hours just sitting down binging on Netflix and, and all other kind of stuff. It was nothing for me to just binge on social media, looking at, in, um, what is it, entertainment videos, hours and hours of just mindless scrolling and just feeding my attention. So the more I kept looking at those funny videos and the stuff that make you laugh. Ha ha ha. The more I desired that stuff. And, you know, I'm pretty sure I, I helped a lot of folks go viral, man. So if you're a diabetic. And you're dealing with diabetes complications. And your diabetes diet isn't working. I'm going to tell you right now what will work. Folks, I'm not this guy who's some guru that just popped up overnight. I've been in the trenches just like you are. I know exactly what you're feeling like. I know by experience what it is to be overweight, sluggish, tired. And just like, man, dealing with certain habits, food cravings that just seems like it's just so overwhelming. Yeah, my diabetes diet that people were telling me to follow and stuff that I would hear, man, that stuff wasn't working, man. You know, being so restrictive and counting calories. I'm not a calorie counter. I pay attention to calories, but I don't, I don't you know, I, I just don't have time, man, to really just sit there and measuring out five peanuts. <laughs> I don't have time to like, you know, sit there and only eating two strawberries. I don't measure when I make my smoothies in the morning or in the afternoon, I'm not sitting there measuring out. Oh, let me count out 12 blueberries. No, I just, I eyeball everything that I, that I put in there. Oh, here's just a bunch of spinach. I just put it in there. I'm not looking at, you know, let me cut this banana in half. Uh, I'm not doing that. Now, I'm not contradicting what I said earlier about cutting back. Don't, don't think that I'm contradicting myself. But my point is, your diet isn't working. It's simply not working. 
for whatever reason. It could be the mindset. It, everything rises and falls with what happens in the mind. Hands down. Your diet isn't failing and not working because you're a terrible person or because you're just, you know, just unsuccessful at it. It's just you have to build a habit, guys. And I really believe with my whole heart that we've been paying too much attention to the wrong things or the things that are really not helping us. So if your diabetes diet or your diet in general is not working, it's time to fix it. Let me give you what I know works. And it's going to be very basic and very simple. You're going to be like, is that it? Yeah, that's it. Now, how you go about executing it, it's on you. But I wholeheartedly, folks, believe that this stuff should not be complicated. What I'm telling you doesn't require you signing up for a specific program to, to, to accomplish. What I'm telling you doesn't require you to hire a personal trainer. I'm not against doing it, but I'm telling you guys, you can achieve these results by putting these things into place. Okay. Let me go ahead and share with you. Here are six things that I believe will work. Now it's just not just one of these things and just try one thing and then see what it, what will happen. This is a collection of things that's going to help you to build a lifestyle that's sustainable so you can lose the weight and keep it off. Number one, eat a healthy, balanced diet more than you eat the non-healthy and the unbalanced diet of food. So again, eat a healthy, balanced diet more. Eat more of it. Eat more healthier foods. Eat more foods that are, are, will give you a balanced diet. More than you eat the non-healthy food. Number two, practice portion control, like I mentioned before, rather than overloading your plate. Man, stay away from the all-you-can-eat places, folks. You don't need to be eating at the all-you-can-eat places. You're just setting yourself up for failure. You're just setting yourself up you know, for going backwards. And getting caught back up in that psychological debt cycle that we talked about uh, earlier. Number three, listen to your body. Eat when you're hungry and stop eating just to be eating. I don't care if that diet program told you, oh, eat six times a, a, a day. Man, what if you're not hungry six times a day? You're just going to be eating because this paper told you to start eating six times a day? Come on, folks. Let's be smart. Eat when you're hungry and stop when you're almost full. You see, there may be a situation right now that you're dealing with where you don't realize that, you know, that you are full, but you just keep eating and eating and eating. You know, there's a whole issue where that's concerned. Some things that, you know, I don't have enough time to deal with in this podcast episode. But it's something that I do recommend that you pay attention to. Listen to your body. Again, eat when you're hungry. You know, if you have a routine, eat during that window of time. Stick to that routine. Make sure it's easy. It's simple to follow and so forth. And don't graze where you just constantly be, you know, snacking and and so forth. And if you are going to be grazing, have some healthy stuff in the house, folks. All right. Number four. Exercise at least 30 minutes a day. Yeah, that's right. Does that mean you have to go to the gym every day? No. I want you to engage in some type of exercise every day for 30 minutes. I'm pretty sure you can find 30 minutes to exercise. It could be walking 30 minutes a day. You can walk around your house and get your 30 minutes in. If you're mindlessly scrolling on social media, you know, Okay, if you if you absolutely have to be on social media while you're exercising, at least walk around your neighborhood or, you know, some people go to the mall and just walk around. For those of y'all who love shopping, do your 30 minutes at the mall. Come on, you could fit those 30 minutes in. I know some of you who sneak away, you know, during lunch 
uh, your lunch break at work and you go to the mall because you just have to see the new outfit and you just have to see the new whatever, whatever. Well, use that time, put on some sneakers, man, and walk the mall. You know, go to your park or whatnot. So you, you get my point. Number five, manage stress so that it doesn't drive you to eating comfort food. Folks, stress management is so important because, you know, your moods affect how you approach eating. And I'm telling you, if you're stressed out, sometimes the last thing that's on your mind is to eat something healthy. You don't want to eat rabbit food when you're stressed out. Who wants to eat a salad when you're stressed out and bugging out after what's going on at work, man? You know, so stress management is very important. There's breathing exercises you can do. I mean, I love when I go out running. I don't listen to music sometimes. Most of the time I don't. I just take in the sounds of whatever. I love hiking and trail running and I'm out there in the woods by myself and it's peaceful. It's calming. There's so many things you can do to manage stress. That was a big thing for me. And here's the last thing. Number six, get enough sleep every night. You know, that may be a tough thing at first. It was for me. And sometimes it is still, you know, because I got a lot going on and, you know, the podcast, the WebMD stuff. And, you know, I run a business and it's all kind of stuff going on. I have a regular nine to five too, folks. You know, I'm grinding just like you, but we have to make it a priority to get enough sleep each night. I have an entire episode on sleep. You may want to check that out. And speaking of previous podcasts, if you want to get more in-depth understanding of how to finally deal with food cravings, I want you to check out this episode of mine that's called How to Beat Diabetes by First Beating food cravings. I mean, when you finish this, if I were you, I will go and check that episode out. Again, it's called How to Beat Diabetes by First Beating Food Cravings. Oh man, that one is one of my most popular and most downloaded episodes. You definitely want to check it out because I believe that's a great supplement to today's episode. Folks, there's so much resources out there so many things that can help you to, to feed your, your mind with positive things as you pursue this journey of yours. And so I want to leave you with some recommended books that I believe are going to help you to really turn things around. It's some of my favorite books. The first one is Eat to Beat Your Diet, Burn Fat, Heal Your Metabolism, and Live Longer. That's by Dr. William Lee. The second book uh, is another one, one of my favorites is called Atomic Habits. It's an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones. That's by James Clear. And the last book, oh my God, this is a gem. It's called The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. Uh, all three of those books, folks, I mean, and I'll leave a link in the show notes of this podcast uh, to these books so that you can see for yourself how these uh, books will impact your life. I mean, it, it's nothing like just constantly feeding your mind, feeding your heart, feeding your soul, feeding your spirit with positive things about, you know, health, wellness, total life, uh, health and prosperity. Guys, we're supposed to be prospering in, in our bodies and having good health. I'm telling you, folks, I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm in the best mental space of my life. But it all started with me focusing on changing my mindset about myself and turning things around. So the reason why your diet may not be working is because maybe your focus is in the wrong place. So my friends, as always, stay focused, keep moving, never go back, leap forward, bounce back because you can, my friend. And above all else, 
trust God. You got this. I believe in you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Beating Diabetes Lifestyle Podcast with Oscar Camejo. We hope you enjoyed this episode. As a reminder, this podcast is intended for motivational and educational purposes only. It is not a substitute for professional care by a physician or other healthcare professional or qualified fitness instructor. This podcast is provided on the understanding that it does not constitute medical or professional advice or services. If you're looking for help on your journey, seek a qualified medical practitioner. It's important that you utilize someone who is a trained, licensed healthcare professional who can help you on your journey toward good health.